This next speaker that's going to come up is, uh, all I have to do is say one thing, Disco USA. And you'll know uh, Ron Joseph, he is keeping the music alive. He is one of the foremost authorities on American Bandstand at Dick Clark. He's really knowledgeable. We all say Ron Joseph, but uh, I know him as RJ. RJ, come on up. Thank you, Corky, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for having this belated luncheon for Dick Clark. I'm going to do it quick because they gave me five minutes. Last time I did it for uh, John Facenda, I had one minute, so you know I really have a lot of check here. First of all, I am very fortunate to uh, have had a career because of Dick Clark's inspiration to me. I met Dick Clark through Tony Mamarella. I came in when the trouble occurred that, uh, that Bob Horn had to leave, and he took over a show that was basically in chaos. However, because of him, I remember on my 16th birthday that he and uh, Pop Singer was, they were giving me a cake, and I, he asked me what I wanted to do for a lifetime after you leave American Bandstand. I said, I want to be a disc jockey. I want to have a show like yours and a radio show. Well, he looked at me and he said, Ronnie, you're a mad, impetuous fool. You have to have some connections to get in the business. You have to have advertisers. I said, I'm aware of that, Dick. I'm going to do it. And remember, you said I was a mad, impetuous fool. You'll be on my first television show. And this was, uh, you know, 1958, 57, the first year Dick took over. And believe it or not, I've been on radio and TV for 52 years. And still today... On 92.1 here in Philadelphia, and also Channel 25, the new digital, carries me on Sunday afternoon. But we're on across the country. I've syndicated the show, all because of Dick. I, I realized that he had more money than I had. He had more connections. His father was an owner of a New York uh, radio station in Utica. But Dick Clark treated me really a little better than anybody else of the committee. Only not because I was good looking or I could dance better because I was not good looking and I could not dance that great. I wanted to learn the business and Dick Clark was a gem. He took me to the little theater at 44th and Broadway. We did the beech nut peppermint gum. I had the big pleasure of wrapped in green and made 14. We had to hold the uh, package of beech nut and I did my first commercial for him. Also, he took me to Palumbo's for the first time. I got to meet Elvis Presley at the old arena at 46th and Market. I got to meet the Beatles, their first American appearance in Atlantic City that Mr. Hammett had been there at the convention hall. All because of my inspiration, Dick Clark. You know, we rode around many times. He didn't know Philadelphia. He was from upstate New York. So when he had to get to a place, I was the go for. Ronnie, I have to get across the city. I have to go to Allentown to the Frolics Ballroom, whichever the case may be, the Woodbury Armory, the Starlight Ballroom in Wildwood on the uh, boardwalk. I did not mind driving at 16 years old with a gentleman of his magnitude. I have so many memories that I only am given five minutes here. He came to my high school, which he never went to anyone's high school. And we offered to give him $500. And believe it or not, the $500 was strictly a talent fee. And he wound up giving it back to me in my class and said it was a personal favor. So Dick Clark did give money back, even though you hear the stories, of course, uh, of the payola scandal and so on and so forth. Dick was a gem. Also, uh, I wanted to go to the um, Drexel University, and he wrote a beautiful letter for me to Dr. Francis Davis, which was the weatherman on Channel 6. So many little things he did, when I think of it, came to my birthday party in Drexel Hill. Well, he lived in Drexel Brook, the apartments, and I lived in Drexel Hill, so maybe geographically he treated me a little nicer than the other guys. He came to my 16th birthday party, and I don't think anyone, even Doris Olson uh, and Mary Elizabeth, who were here, and Barbara Marson, if she's here, remember the, the show with 65 people from the committee came to my house on a rainy day, and Dick Clark came in a torrential downpour to my home. There are too many things to uh, really speak about. Friday night on my radio show at 7 o'clock on 92.1, I will 
recount most of the things that Dick did for me. Especially I feel privileged. I'm looking over all the different things that I had to tell you. There are too many to mention, but I wanted to be like him. I tried. I did it on the reasonable way, by going out and schlepping my show with the old two-inch tapes across the United States. And at one time, we were carried in about 12, 13 of the major cities. I really owe a lot to Dick Clark. Not that he really helped me, he inspired me. And to be inspired by a man of his magnitude, I feel very, very blessed. Thank you for hearing me. We call him RJ, and, and he knows a lot about the, uh, the days of American Bandstand and uh, Dick Clark.